Okay, so here we go with uh, box plots um, in base R. So again, look, I'm working here in, in, in the, the R lectures a set of files that you've downloaded as, as a zip or you've cloned to your desktop. If you're using the GitHub desktop uh, app, I'm working here in L9 box plots and I've loaded up the L9 box plots that are MD files, so this markdown file. So I'm going to work through a look at box plots, um, both uh, how to do them in R, but also just thinking about exactly what they mean. Uh, and how to interpret them. Uh, so as ever, we're going to start by removing uh, with the list equals ls uh, for our script, just to make sure everything's kind of almost entirely clean. I've, I've just launched a new version of, of R, so it's just loaded up fresh over here, so I don't need to do this control command shift f 10 Hard restart again, but if you want, you can do that yourself, and you should, you should check that anyway at the end of any analysis before knitting our final version. So again, you do that up here with session restart. So again, we're going to focus on this iris data set. I'm not going to dwell on exactly what that is, but we'll here we make it available, um, and we just very quickly remind ourselves what it looks like. So, uh, structure of virus is uh, it's a data frame with 150 observations with five columns of variables. We've got measures, four different measures of the uh, taken on the same flower. Uh, so we've got the sepal length, the sepal width, the petal length, and the petal width. And for each of our flowers, it's assigned a species. So it's either uh, one of three species, one of three levels, Setosa, Versipolar, and Virginica. Um, so we're going to take a quick plot of this. We're going to look at a plot of um, we're going to look at a plot of petal length here uh, by species. So that's that's what we want to kind of look at. Is just look to understand how we did that. And we sort of looked at this already in the histogram data. Um, or we're just going to take a little bit more of a look at it in a slightly different way, and build up towards looking at box plots and what they mean. So uh, here I'm going to plot uh, petal length tilde, so petal length by as numeric species. I'll tell you about that in a minute, but basically that is petal length as species. Data, the data frame is the iris data frame, and the type I'm forcing it to be P as a point here. Uh, the reason for this is sort of twofold. Uh, first fold, we need the as.numeric because um, species is a factor, and if I just do petal length by species, it'll actually cleverly interpret it and give me a box plot too soon, and I actually don't want to see a box plot just yet. So this as.numeric, if I copy that and paste that over here, you'll see, um, we we'll have to make it available, it doesn't know what it is, so the reason, okay, so let's throw an error there, it doesn't know what species is. It will know what it is over here in the plot when we do it because we've specified the data set. So just to take a look at this, I'm going to have to do iris dollar sign species. So as.numeric takes iris dollar sign species, which is a factor, and it forces it, coerces it to be numeric style. So it converts it from setosas, versicolors, and virginicas to ones, twos, and threes. So now we can go back over here and take a look at this plot. Um, so we're going to force that to be a numeric so that it plots a scatter plot for us. Um, and it's going to force type equals p to be a point or a scatter plot type graph. Now the reason I'm going to do this is because actually among, so as I've said before in some of the podcasts, the only type of plot there is in the world really is a scatter plot. Um, everything else is an abstraction of a scatter plot to some extent or another. So this is what our actual data looks like. And it's not going to be too pretty, but we can start here to understand what's going on our data set and we'll work towards looking at these same data um, with a box plot. So let's evaluate that and just get on. So we plot that and we end up with this. So we end up with a stacked plot. So here we've got petal length on the y-axis. We've got as numeric species on the x-axis. There's one, two, and three. So that corresponds to Setosa, Versicolor, and Virginica. And it stacked the points up here in terms of the petal length. Um, so what it does is let us see basically what the range is. It lets us see what the spread of our data is for each of our three species. We can see that the setosas are tend to be of uh, shorter petal lengths, and also they're more tightly compacted in distribution compared to the the, ver the versicolor, which are slightly larger, and the virginica, which are slightly larger again. If you remember from the histograms, we we seen that already. But one of the things at the minute is that we actually can't see all the data. And the reason is that some of these data, some of these points are actually sitting exactly and entirely on top of one another. Um, so what we want to basically do is spread out these a little bit. And the way we can do that is uh, essentially, by, um, essentially by jittering it. So before we get to that, actually, before we jitter those, I've got another little plot. So I'm just going to tidy up this plot a bit so that we remove the ones, twos, and threes, and we add on the labelings for the setosas. 
So the way we're going to do that is over here with this code, we're again, we're going to plot path length by alphanumeric species. Data is iris, type is P for points. Axes is false, okay? So I'm actually going to set the axes to be false. So it's not going to plot any axes on for me at all. The X label is species. The Y label is petal length. So let's run this line by line. So that has plotted my data like this. So you can see it hasn't drawn the axes at all. Got our labels, we've got our data, but we haven't got the axes. So what I'm going to do now is use the axis function. So axis one will add the first axis, which is the bottom one. So the order is bottom is one, then the left is two, then three up top and four on the right. So I'm going to add axis one at, what, where do I want to add ticks? I want to add, put ticks at positions one, two, and three. So a sequence here from one colon three is one to three in steps of one. So they're at one, two, and three. And the labels I'm going to use are the levels extracted from the iris species. So those labels will be Setosa, Versicolor, and Virginica. So let's run that one line. So let's add axis one. So there's axis one added, Setosa, Versicolor, Virginica. And then we can add axis two and just let it do its own default thing and add that on there. So those are our petal lengths in centimeters. So now we can start to see we've got a slightly better looking graph. But again, as I said earlier, the problem is that the points are all stacked up and we want to move those, spread them out a little bit in the left-right direction, uh, which essentially is we want to jitter them. And that's exactly what the function is called. Um, so this next little chunk of code here um, will plot petal length as a function of not just as numeric species, but as a jittered amount. So we're going to jitter that whole bit there will take the species data, it will apply the as.numeric co conversion, so it'll convert it from the labels, Setosa, Versicolor, Virginica, to the numbers one, two, and three. And then it will, after that, it will jitter them, so it'll just jiggle them a bit left and right, add a little bit, subtract a little bit, and it'll add a small amount, we'll use the default amount of 0 0.1. You could make that a bit bigger if you wanted, you could play with that so that you get the kind of right spread and spacing that you want. Again, the data is in the iris data set, type is P, axis false, just like above, and we'll add on manually the axis one at the bottom and the axis two um, here as well. And I'm gonna try and put in an LAS in there and hopefully that will run. So I'm just gonna run all three of those lines together because we've sort of already done most of it up here. The only addition now is we've added a jitter. The only difference between here and here is we've added a jitter and I've tried to add this LAS equals one and I'm hoping that's gonna work. So now we can jump back over to our plot, that's uh, the resultant plot, and we can see much more clearly now the spread of the data. So we can see now with that jitter applied to the left and right, um, that our versicolor data, we can see all the data points now, nearly all of them anyway. Some of them are still masking each other a little bit there. Um, and some of these are masking each other a bit, and that's just down to a little bit of random chance as to what they're gonna jitter by. We could improve that, but if you wanted to try and spread those out even more in the left right direction, you could increase the amount of jitter. You just don't wanna add too much so that you start bleeding them into the other groups that are beside them. So it's a little bit of trial and error there until you get with sort of a plot that you are happy with. So I suppose this is what I mean by this is, you know, ultimately it comes down to a scatter plot. The true scatter plot for these data is, is something like um, this one. We can augment and help that a bit by spreading out those data points by applying a little jitter to those just to separate out those groups so that we can see the spread of data. Um, but it doesn't really let us see where the kind of the weighting of those data is like the histogram did. Um, and that's precisely what we kind of want to be doing. And it's that that we want to use a simple box plot for. So the very next chunk of code is going to produce a simple box plot for us. You can read here on the Wikipedia page, there's a link out of the HTML file, or you can copy and paste that direct for here from the raw markdown uh, and read up more about, uh, more about box plots. But so we're going to go back here and we're going to specify a really quick box plot. So here is just, um, I'm just going to hard specify a one by one panel. So it's just, that's kind of just a hangover actually. There's no real need for me to do that because we're already only plotting a single panel. That's a hangover from another bit of code I copied, but it does absolutely no harm to manually specify that again. It's basically setting, it's, it's, it's set to that anyway at the moment, but there's no harm specifying that by hand. And now we're gonna do our first simple box plot. So we're gonna ask for a box plot. We're gonna ask for a box plot of, we don't need that, we don't need that. Data equals iris. So we're gonna do a box plot of petal length by species. 
um, and we're going to do the data is in iris. We're going to set the y lab to be petal length in centimeters. We're going to specify the y lab, x lab to be species. And kind of annoyingly, whereas plot takes the option BTY for box type equals capital L, if you remember, box plot takes doesn't take that option, completely annoying. I forget it all the time. Every time I've got to look it up, it takes this option, which is frame.plot, and we're going to frame.plot equals false. So let's run that. So now we've run our quick box plot, and we've got exactly what we wanted. So what we've got now is these series of boxes have been drawn. Instead of the scatter plot of our data, we've got boxes to kind of summarize or attempt to summarize the shape, the distribution of those data points in, in the vertical direction. So again, we've got Satosa versicolor and verdigginity just like before, but instead now with that jittered cluster of dots, we've got these boxes and lines and dots and whiskers and points that we've got to, got to make sense of. And with a bit of practice, you get to learn how to sort of turn, convert one to the other and quickly visualize what the data, what the shape of the data, the shape of the distribution is just by looking at these plots. Although saying that, you still have to be a little careful because they, they can because they're an abstraction, they can kind of mask certain subtle patterns. Um, so it still might be worth your while doing the, the, the scatter plot as well, just to satisfy yourself that, there's, that the corresponding boxes make sense in light of that scatter. I mean, for example, you could have two, if you had two clusters of da data points in the scatter, you wouldn't be able to see that in the box plot at all. You just end up with a big fat box plot in the middle, and you might think it's all just one cluster of data, whereas in fact there were two clusters, top and bottom. Um, so anyway, going back to these boxes, these are fine, the data is suitable. Um, so with a box plot like this, we get a summary of the data. So this thick black line here is called the median. The median is the, the, median is the line at which 50% of the data, so half the data points are above it and half the data points are below it. So in this data set, there were 50 data points per species. So this black line here means there are 25 data points above it and there are 25 data points below it. That's what the median means. This inner box down here, this box that we get here, this is the interquartile range. So this means that essentially this, if we start collecting the data all the way up here as we come to here, inside this box, so this is 50% of the data is below it, this is 25% of the data is in here, and another 25% of the data is in here. So this is the interquartile range. Goes, so this is the middle 50%, so there's 25% here, there's 25% here, so that means there's 50% of the data sits in that box there, inside that interquartile range. It's called the interquartile range because it goes between the two first quarters. The 25th is the first quarter and the 75th is the sort of last quarter, and this is the range that goes in between those two quartiles. We then get, a, we then get an interpretation of the extent of our whiskers out the extent of the data out beyond with what are called whiskers. So these whis these are whiskers here and these ends are just the ends of the whiskers. Now there's two things to notice here. These whis this whisker goes up and up and up and ends with a horizontal line. This whisker goes down and ends with a horizontal line, but this one has a point below it here. So the idea here is that the whiskers will extend all the way up until it reaches the, the maximum, the, the outside of the data. So this, these have come up here, they've come up as far as they can, and then they reach the outside, the, out, the outermost data point is within that. Actually, it's right on that level. The outermost data point is right on that level there. So that's actually the range of the data. Whereas on this side, you can see there's a data point sticking out here, and that's because the whisker here goes out by default for a maximum of one and a half times the interquartile range. So this whisker is extending, keep going down here, so it's stopped because it's reached one and a half times this interquartile range and it doesn't want to go any further. And it stops there and then it shows our data point here as what we would call an outlier. So our this data point here is in some respects an outlier. It lies slightly beyond where we might normally expect the data point to sit given the shape of the distribution. But in saying that, it's somewhat arbitrary picking a 1.5 times that interquartile range, and you could pick another value. And ultimately, like some people will get all bent out of shape about wanting to throw outliers in the bin if they sit out like this. But realistically, unless you know, unless that data point was somewhere off completely crazy, like down here somewhere, and that was because the petal had fallen off and somebody had written down a zero, you probably wouldn't want to bin it just because it's a little bit outside that uh, whisker. And the same is true here for Satosa. So again, this one extends up until it reaches the maximum 
uh, petal length for the Satosa. This one comes down this whisker, but it stops at one and a half times its interquartile range, and it shows this one here as being an outlier to that distribution. Whereas Virginica has no outliers as such um, with the current settings, and so our whiskers extend to the full range of those data sets. Um, so that's what a box plot looks, that's what the box plots look like, and we typically would use them, especially when we've got lots of groups. And you can imagine having, if you had more, many, many more species there, you could quickly see the pattern and quickly try to work, you could quickly sort of visualize whether the medians and hence the means, I mean, you could drop a plot for the mean on top of this as well if you want, um, an X or something in here, you could quickly see where the medians or the means of these distributions are different from each other across a whole range of different species that you could record it very quickly and visually with just, uh, with just your eye. You'd also be able to get a handle on the variation and think whether the, the whether some of the plants have big variation in petal length and others have smaller variation in petal length. Like here, the Satosa has, seems to have smaller variation than the Virginica. But you've got to bear in mind here again that the Satosa ones are smaller than the Virginica ones, so maybe there's less scope here um, to, to display variation in petal length compared to over here with the, the, the larger Virginica. So that's basically it, that's how you do box plots. I just thought I'd add a little bit of extra code on here at the end to kind of help match and link up the, the histograms that we did before, which is sort of a more, a slightly fuller view of the distribution of the data and match that up to the box plots that we're seeing here. Um, so I'm just gonna run all this code. Essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw, a, I'm gonna draw a histogram here of just the Satosa data with the breaks like we did in the previous podcast. And then I'm gonna add on top of that plot, I'm gonna add a box plot of the Satosa um, petal lengths. So here I'm gonna plot a histogram of the iris petal length for which the species, the iris species is equal to Satosa, just like before, you can go revise that if you want. And then here I'm gonna copy, I basically just copy that chunk of code there. I'm gonna plot here now a box plot of the petal length for which the species are the Satosa, labeled Satosa. We're gonna draw it at arbitrarily, we're gonna draw it at position 3.1 on the y-axis, we'll see what that does in a moment. I'm gonna set horizontal to true, because I'm gonna draw it horizontally, not vertically. Add is set, the add argument, the add option is set to true, because I, want, I don't wanna draw a new whole new plot and just erase the old plot and put this, I wanna add this one to the existing plot. And I'm gonna set axes to false, because this histogram has already drawn my axes for me. I don't want the box plot one adding axes on the plot as well on top. So let's take a quick, look at that and right here at the beginning I've got a par mf row equals 3 1 so I'm going to do this three I've got three species so I'm going to make three histograms in three rows in one column three by one panel plot so first of all a histogram and a box plot of Satosa same again for Versicolor same again for Virginica I just copied and pasted basically and changed the names of the species that we call that we refer to and it here here and here so I've changed those three different from each of those three little chunks. And just to keep myself happy, I've broken up my code here. Um, it would, even within this chunk here, I could have done three separate chunks, but within this code, I've broken up my code just visually so I can see them with these series of a hash comment and a series of hyphens and a hash comment series of hyphens, just, I think, to make it much easier for me to see. So let's run all that there. Right, so we get something like this. I'm gonna pop that out. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit going to reshape that. So this is basically what we've got. So that plot, that chunk of code there has made three different panels all in exactly the same, all in exactly the same manner. It's done a histogram in gray of the Satosa species and on top of it it's just shown. So again arbitrarily I picked the point 3.1 so I played around with it a bit until I got my box plots not too close but not too far away from uh, the top of the, the top of the histograms here. So this histogram is the uh, quick Using the Sturgis method, that's set to, actually it's not the Sturgis method, it's we've used um, breaks at a sequence from zero to seven in steps of 0 0.25 um, centimeters. So those breaks are set, they're not using a default Sturgis method, they're in breaks of, you can see, from one to 1 1.25, 1.5, 1.75, and two, and all the way along, so in steps of 0.25 centimeters. So that's our histogram of the data. You can see that it's sort of tightly compacted, it doesn't range too widely left to right on the data. There's quite a lot of it in the middle, and that's exactly what we see in the histogram, the corresponding box plot. So this box plot's kind of got a narrow here, it's narrow here in the quartile range because all the data is clustered up in there. The median is right here, 50% of the data, either side of that line, and our whiskers extend out um, not too far, and just one little outlier popping out just outside the end of it where we might normally expect that to be. 
Same goes for Versicolor. Versicolor we can see with the histogram is a much wider distribution, it's lower and flatter because it's more spread out and that's reflected in the box plot. So the box plot again has got a much wider interquartile range, the corresponding whiskers are wider because the data extends out much further and that's our outlier there and that's corresponding with that, uh, that little bump in the bin of the histogram there. And again with the Virginica, I don't need to go through that, but exactly the same kind of thing with Virginica, spread out wide again, the median is shifted to the right in the petal end. So I suppose we kind of normally wouldn't show our data like that. I mean, to be honest, if with you know, if you only had three groups, you might do that. It's a nice way to show the data, especially with just the histograms. You might add the box plots on if you felt like really either showing off or drilling something home to the reader. That would for three groups that's okay. But you can imagine for five or six or seven or eight or nine or even fifty or a hundred groups, you just couldn't get away with doing histograms for all of them. And that's where the box plots um, come into their own on their come into their own. So in that sort of scenario, that's when you would typically see a plot that looks like this, where you'd have the box plots drawn vertically, not horizontally, with no histograms, and all stacked up like this nicely um, for someone to see. So that's a, that's a run through the basics of box plots. We're going to follow up in the next um, lecture. I'll show you how to customize that plot even further in BASAR, and then a subsequent uh, quick uh, podcast where we will go over exactly the same thing, but do it quickly in ggplot. So we'll pick it up in a few minutes. Bye.